Kakalosh Bokato, we're continuing on the Mishnah on Daf Pe Amud Bet. So we have the Mishnah, Daf Pe Amud Bet, and the Mishnah says as follows. Nitmaet Ha'ochel, right? What happens right now, we're talking about Shituf Mevot. Remember, you just made a Shituf Mevot, which means you joined together, everyone together in a Mavui. And what happened was, is that the food became minimized. Nitmaet Ha'ochel. So see, if you have to add food in order to get to the Shiur. Um, and then again, you're going to be mizakeh to everybody else. You don't have to tell them about it. If now there's new uh, people coming into the mavui, right? So therefore, which obviously now it's not enough food for everybody. Here you do have to be mosif. You're going to have to be mizakeh to everybody else. But here you do have to be modia. You do have to tell everybody what happened. So how much is the shiur? So when there's a lot of people, it has to be enough. For two seudot, right? For everybody. If it's going to be very few people, it's like a groget for every single one of them. Amar Rabbi Yosef says, Rabbi Yosef, but maybe we read one of these words, that's only at the beginning of the Eru. Aval but when we're talking about that at the beginning of the Shabbat, it was normal. And then only afterwards, it started being mitmaet, kol shehu. As long as there's a, you know, whatever amount, it's going to be okay. Velo amru la'arev chatserot. The really reason why then afterwards you still have to do it is in order that the children should not forget the concept of Eruvim, and that's why you should do it. Says the Gemara, the Maya Skina, what are we dealing with? If you're talking about that, we're talking about one species of food, so then what are we talking about that even if the food became less, even if the entire thing went off, right? It should be okay. Which means why? Because you're allowed to be mishatefotam. You're allowed to come and make it a new one in the same species of food without actually telling them. Ela bishneminin. Obviously, we're talking about there were two different types of foods. So afilu nitmeet namino. So then, even if it was minimized, it shouldn't help, right? The time was we learned in a brayta. Kalaha ochel. If the food was already gone from the eruv that you've done, mimin echad. If it's going to be one species of food, then serich lodiya. You don't have to tell them about it. But if it's two different species of foods, you do have to tell them about it. So you see from here that the difference is between minechad and shneminim, one species of food or two species of food. So it says the Gemara, Ibaiteima minechad, Ibaiteima mishneminim. He says, no, whether we're talking about minechad or we're talking about shneminim, so whether we're talking about one species or two species, right? So Ibaiteima minechad, even if we're talking about one species, my nitmaet, what does it mean, nitmaet, that it became minimized in the amount of food? Nitmaet. Right, that it was completely, completely gone. That means they completely finished off the entire food. If you could talk about minin, the kalashane, but it's different that if it was completely finished off, so then you have to be modia. You understand? But not if it was just that you ate part of it and it minimized the amount. Okay, it says the two dots. So we said that if you're going to come, you have to actually tell them about it. If there's new people coming into the Mavui, you have to actually tell them about it. Okay, and you have to actually be mezakeh otam, and you have to add on to the eruv. So says the Gemara, Amar of Shizbi, Amar of Chasta, Zotomeret, says of Shizbi in the name of Chasta, Zotomeret, it means to say, Chalukim alav chavera v'al Rabbi Yehuda, that they argue on Rabbi Yehuda. The Tanam, as we learned in the Mishnah, Amar Rabbi Yehuda, says Rabbi Yehuda, B'med, when you want to do these words, Be'ru v'tchumim, Aval be'ru v'chat serot, but when we're talking about eruv v'chat serot, Be'me'aravim me'lada v'shelo l'lada. We are going to make an eruv, whether l'ladat or l so says the Gemara, Pshita de Chalukim. Obviously, that we're talking about here that they're Chalukim, that they're arguing, right? It's obvious, right? He says over here, because it's Mefurash, Eruve Chatzerot, you do have to be Modia. That means to do with an Eruv of the courtyards, you do have to tell them about it. So says the Gemara, no. Ma'u the Tema, I would have thought to say, Hanim, you know, one of these words, Bechatzer Sheben Shne Mavot, we're talking about a courtyard between two different Mavois. But in the Chatzer of one Mavui, I would say you don't need to. Kamash Malan comes teach you, Rav Chasta that our Mishnah is talking about a chatzet of one mavui, and still you have to be modia to everybody else about the shituf. You have to tell everybody else about the concept that you're being mishatef everyone together. You're putting everyone together. Okay? So says the Gemara, kamahu shiuro. Right? We're by the two dots. How much is the shiur? So says the Gemara, kamahu mirubin. What does it mean that there's a lot of people in the chatzet that you need the two shiudot for every single person? And if there's very few people in the chatzet, so then it's even a girl get it. Amar of Yudam Shmuel says of Yudam Shmuel, Shmona Yisrael ben Adam, eighteen people. So eighteen people is considered a lot of people. Okay, 
So says the Gemara, Shmonai Sevet to Lot's only eighteen and not more. Yeah, Ema. So says the Gemara, you're right. Ema Shmonai Sevet Lach. You're right. It's eighteen plus, meaning it's not just exactly eighteen. Eighteen plus. That's considered a lot of people, and therefore you need two suudot for every single person all to be together, and that's what's considered the eruv. So my Shmonai said, so why do we say Davkash eighteen? They explained it. My father, Rav Yehuda, explained it to me. You're going to come and divide between two sudo between them. And you're not going to have a groget for every single person. That's called merubin. So therefore, it's going to be enough with two sudot. But if you don't have that many people, it's considered you have very few people. Teaching us. That the shiud of mazon of shte seudot is like 18 grogerot. Okay, that means if a person comes and he tells you how much is considered two seudot of a meal, you're going to take 18 grogerot, whichever you get it, I don't remember if it was around 30 grams or 32 grams, whatever it is, and you're going to come and you're going to take that times, um, that's what we're saying over here, times 18. So 18 times the 30 grams, that's considered two seudot. Okay, fine. Says the Mishnah. You could do any type of a food to do the shituf mevot, right? And also eruvim, any type of eruvim. So you have eruvim. No, because now we're talking about what types of food. Before we talked about the measurement of food. Not here. Before, before. I think we learned Rakol Me'avim. Ah, well, we did bring it down before, but I'm saying, but it wasn't the Mishnah. This is actual Mishnah that speaks about it. Yeah, I'm sure we brought it down before to do with that, you know, the we quoted this. The, no, we, we spoke about this, but not, but this is the actual Mishnah where we bring it down. So basically, you could use any type of a food for Eruvei Chatzirot or Shetufei Mivot, except for Mayim Mimelach. Okay? These are the words of Rabbi Yezid. Right? Rabbi Yoshua, Omer Rabbi Yoshua says, Kikar Hu Eruv. Only a Kikar of bread is an Eruv. Afilo Ma'afe Se'a, even if it's going to be Ma'afe of Se'a of Kemach. The Hu Prusa, and you took a prusa, right, which is basically a slice of it. Kikar ki isar, but if you have a kikar of bread, which is like an isar, so it comes out that you have to use something which is shalem, even if it's going to be small, but not something which is like a prusa, even though it comes from something huge. So you could have one of these chatan chalot, you know, one of these huge things, but you took a piece? No. You could have a small chala, but it's whole? Yes, you could use that. Okay, that's what we said in the Mishnah. Says the Gemara. Uh, yeah, usually you have a of matzot. That's what they usually use. The majority of people use matzot for the simple reason that matzot they never go bad. You understand? So you could use it, and you know you're not. You change it's, it every six months. Okay, fine. So says the Gemara. Pe'alef Pe'alef Amudalef. Eighty-one A one. Tanina Chadazim. Now one second. We already learned this once, right? This is what uh, John Jack was saying in the Mishnah also. Because the Mishnah actually said, So Amar Rabbah, Rabbah comes and he says, right, this is coming to exclude Rabbi Yoshua. The, the Amar, but he says, Kikar in, midichlin lo. There we learned that only a kikar, a bread, yes, but not anything else. So here, Kamash Malan, here we're teaching you, no, bakol, it could be everything, not only bread. Meaning there, we were talking about the concept of the bread. Here we're talking about, no, 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 not only bread, and anything, any type of a food. You could have it on this, on that, any type of a food. Pizza, yeah, pizza, whatever you want. Okay, so eight we are by it. Somebody comes and asks a question. I thought you said one second. I thought that we said over there that the bread was only if you remember, we kept on breaking down wine, it wasn't bread, bread was only. So says the man, who's the one that says bread, yes, anything else, no, right? Rabbi Yoshua, Uktani, and we learned now. Bakol, everything. So this comes to Le'apuk, Rabbi Yoshua. That's why we're bringing it down. Ela Amar Barachana, but it says, Rabbi Barachana, Le'apuk, Rabbi Yoshua, De Amar, Shlema in Prusa, Lo, Kamashmanam Bakol. Here we're also teaching you a new chidush. Forget about the bread and what type of a food. The concept that has to be Shalem and not a Prusa. That in itself is another chidush. Okay? U Prusa, my time So why can't you use a slice of bread? Meaning, why does that have to be shalem? Even if it's much smaller, it could be has to be shalem, has to be complete, whole. But if it's a size, what's what's the difference? So prosama tamelo, I'm gonna be seven shalom and rebi mishum eva because of sinam achloket, which means if everyone's going to be allowed to come and use prusot, 
So then everyone is going to come and they're going to give their kikarot shlemim, right? They're going to come and going to start, you know, getting all upset at the ones that they only gave a prusa. They're going to say, well, kamtsan, like what? You're a miser. You know, what is this? Is that we come and we give you a, a loaf of bread. You know, we're all together in this. And all of a sudden you're going to come and you're going to take a little tiny slice. So Amalei Ravah Chabere de Ravah Levashi says Ravah Chabere de Ravah Levashi Irvu kulam be pruso. What happens if everyone then used slices of bread? Mao, what's halacha? Amalei tells him Shemi achzor davar lekir kulo. No, you are not allowed. You're not allowed to steal. Why? Because we don't want to go back to the original problem, which means we don't want afterwards that it's going to come and then you're going to have again that maybe one person is going to use the pruso and everyone else is going to be used the shalem and then you're going to have you know the Sina and Eva between them, you know, like the hatred or animosity, which are going to be between them. Amen of Yochanan and Shul says of Yochanan and Shul, Nitlai menu kedechaluka uchde dimua mervin loba. If they came and they took from a full loaf and they took out of it a frashat chala, or they took out of it to take of trumoto masrot, truma, mervin loba, you could use, right? That means even though it's a prutsa, you could still use it. Okay, so says the Gemara, we learned to write a kede dimua mervin loba. We said, one second, I thought only Kedid Dimwa, yes. I mean, it's only for Ma'asir, but not for Chala. Says the Gemara, like I said, a question. It all depends on a Nachtom, right, or the Balabait. Because basically, if it's going to be Chalat Nachtom, so he's obligated to take Miki Karol Katan, so it's, it's, it's not considered a Chisaron. I mean, even though you took off a little tiny piece, it's still full, still whole. Okay, but if it's going to be Chalat Balabait, which is a bigger one, so then it is considered a chisaron. The Tanam was going to the Mishnah. Shiur chala. How much do you have to take off of a chala? Echad me'asim varba, a twenty-fourth. They'll say yisal atzmo. If you're doing it for yourself, the yisal mishte beno, or for a wedding of your child, echad me'asim varba, one twenty-fourth. Nachtom shu will sell him kovshu, but if it's a nachtom, v'chena isha shall sell him kovshu, or a woman that she's selling it to the public, echad me'arvim shmune. It's one forty-eighth. So it comes out that a chalat balabait you have to take off double the chala than a chala of a baker or a woman that she's selling to the public. So it comes out that there's a difference then. So therefore, by the baker, it's not considered a chisaron. It's not considered you're lacking even though you have to take it off. By everyone else, yes. So Amr of Chasta says of Chasta, Tefara bekisa me'arvin loba. If you're going to come and you're going to connect the prusot, right, through a, with a kisam, so you cook like a toothpick and you come and you connect all the, the slices of bread together to make like a, a loaf. You're allowed to make an iru with that. By the way, you should know that's a lacha also to do the bracha. To do the bracha, you should always make a bracha on something which is shalem. Even if it's disconnected, if you connect it together, even with your hands many times, it's considered shalem, right? It's better if obviously you could connect it with a toothpick, but not always you can. So for example, let's say an orange. The lacha is, is that you should always make a bracha when it's already complete, when it's ready to eat. So you're not going to make a bracha on the orange and then peel the orange and eat. You're not going to make the bracha after you peel the orange, but it's still like a whole, because you're not going to put the entire orange or clementine in your mouth. So what are you going to do? You're going to pluck one out. When you take this one out, now it's not shalem anymore. It's not complete. It's not whole. So how do you do it? You pluck it out. Says the kavarim, you put it back together and you hold it together and you make the bracha. When you finish making the bracha, you take it and you eat it. But it was already cut. You already separated it. Right now, now, the only reason why we don't do that for Hamotzi is because you have to say it on Shalem. But let's say, for example, it would break off. So then you would be able to put it together through this kisam with this like toothpick or whatever, and then it would be considered whole. So says the Gemara Tanya, we learned in Abraita, Emar Vinoba, right? That you cannot make an edu with it. So says the Gemara, Lakashi asked a question. It all depends whether it's known, whether it's recognizable, which means. If the kikar is not look, doesn't look whole, that's why you're not allowed to make an iru with it. But if the kikar does look whole, which means that it's not recognizable that you put a toothpick in order to hold it up, so then it's going to be okay. Okay? Amar Abin Zerah Amar Shmuel, says Abin Zerah Amar Shmuel, Me'arvim Pat Orez Pat Dochan. You're allowed to make an iru also with bread of orez and dochan, which means of rice and millet. Amar Morukva, Morukva says, L'dim Pat Shalim Inez Shmuel Shmuel, they explained to me that which Shmuel said, Pat Orez Me'arvim Pat Dochan Emarvim. With bread, with rice bread, yes, not with miller bread. You're even allowed to do it with bread of lentils that I never heard of. Rice bread, I've heard of. Miller bread, yeah. Lentils? Lentils, uh, pasta lentils, spaghettis. Ah, oh, that's what it is? Pasta lentils? Okay. 
No, because they are. They yeah, are. there's that, and it's like like into a bread. They make it like into a bread. No, but if you make pasta, you can are you make doing a bread. it in, in the bread? Okay, right. Spaghetti is you know gluten free. They make it. Ah, uh, they make it out of the, the lentils. Okay, so says the Gemara. Any is it so? The ahi davai bishne de moshuim. Right, there was the pata dashi that they made during the days of shuim. The shadi lekalbe. He threw it to his dog. The loachla, and the dog didn't even eat it. Yeah. <laughs> We're talking about the gluten-free bread. Yeah, you have to be careful. Yeah, so what are you talking about? Because even the dog didn't want to eat it. It was so disgusting. You understand? So how are you going to now make an eruv out of that? So he says, <laughs> He says, no, that was other types of things, which was terrible. <laughs> he says, <laughs> So you're going to make all this bread from these things. Okay. The Papa the Papa says, He says, no. The reason why he threw it to a dog was because it was uh, it was baked on gechalim that was made out of tsuat adam, out of the excrement of human beings. Very interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. as it's written, <laughs> Basically, since it was, you know, you were cooking it in something so disgusting, that's why the dog didn't even eat it. I mean, right? There was like a mishkal. Which means that the Yechezkel was told to eat this dafka, this bread, right, during the Shnat Ravon. Because maybe there was not going to be any other bread, so therefore they had to eat this bread. The Papa says, Arivata. We're talking about the Tzura, the bread was like Arivat Sorim. Was it, that means they weren't uh, makpid on the, on the Tzura, that it didn't have to have such a nice form. And not like Arivat Chitim, that usually they make it very, very nice. I mean, wheat bread usually is made very nicely. The barley bread is much more like, you know, big deal. You know, like they don't care about the tzura, the form. The, the kusmin is the spelt. Yeah, kusmin, yeah. Where, but where is the kusmin? Kusmin is before. No, is ah, yeah, yeah, kusmin before, yes. It's kusmin spelt. is spelt. Spelt until today they make. It's very, very expensive. Very expensive, but it's very good. Healthy and it's good. Very, very. Yes, spelt. Okay, so we're continuing the Mishnah and the Pe'alef and Mudalef on the bottom. So a person could come and he could give a ma'a, which is a coin, money, to the person that's selling the wine, right? That's selling to him, or to the baker that's selling bread. Which means that, for example, let's say, right, Baba Haki is a baker. So I'm going to come to him and he lives in the same neighborhood. So instead of me coming and bringing him bread, I'm going to give him money. And by giving him money, now that part of the bread that he has there, that's already had an oof with us. Or the same thing with the chervani, right? With the wine, right? Uh, keeper. These words are really as lo zachulu ma'utav. His money does not uh, acquire for him a shituf in the eruv, right? A partnership in the eruv. He alef amu bet, right? Eighty-two. Yeah. Eighty-one B. Sorry. Umodim b'shar kol adam. So they're going to be in other things as well. She zachulu ma'utav. Right, that it's going to that they were mezakeh the money. Sheem arvin laadam emiratod that they could only do it only knowingly. Meaning, I cannot make an eruv for someone else for with food or whatever it is without his knowledge. I'm a rabbi who does says a rabbi that when we these words we have to chumin. But the rabbi chatzero arvin the tov shelo betor. The rabbi chatzero you can do it whether it's with his knowledge or without. If he is zachel laadam shelo befana and chavin laadam shelo befana because to do with the rabbi chatzero it's a zechut for him. So therefore, I can give him a zechut even without his knowledge. I can make him do that. But I cannot do a chovah, okay, without that. Meaning I cannot bring a, an obligation unto someone, but I can make something good for someone. Okay, fine. My time, Adar Rabbi Yezer, what's the reason of Rabbi Yezer? Halomashach, he says, he didn't do meshicha, which means that if I give you money, right, he says, how could it help if I didn't do meshicha? I give you money for something. Giving over money is not a kinyan in order to be considered mine. I have to do meshicha, I have to acquire it, I have to do a form of acquisition. So therefore, part of the Meshichah is I'm drawing it towards me. So Amar Nachman Amar Ravua says Nachman name Rabbi Ravua Asaor Rabbi Liazer Karbat Prakim Bashana. Rabbi Liazer made it like the four different times during the year, which means there are four different times during the year that Chachamim say the money does acquire without any type of Meshichah. Four times a year. The Tanam was going to the Mishnah. Barba Prakim Elu Mashchitin et Tabach Bal Korcho. Right, they force him to do it against his will in order to give money to whoever that's doing it. But filu shor shave elef dinar, ve'en lokeach elef dinar echad, kofin oto lishchot. It comes out that four times a year, they could actually lose a lot of money. Why? Let's say he's got a bull that's worth a thousand dinar. But the purchasers, 
They only want to pay one dinar for it. We force him to, 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 to do shechita, and he loses out all that money. And therefore, he met if it dies before, met la lokeach. Therefore, the lokeach, the purchaser, loses it out, which means that usually the purchaser doesn't lose it out. You didn't deliver. What do I care? I paid you for my meat. If the, if the animal died early, it's not my problem. It's your problem. However, though, here, since the purchaser, since the seller is the one that's always going to lose out during these four times in the year, the purchaser loses out if it dies. Okay, met la lokeach. Why should the lokeach lose out? Why, if it dies, why does it die to the lokeach? He didn't do mishicha. Amaravuna b'mashach. Ravuna answered, no, he did do mishicha. So, if so, let's see the seifa. The seifa says, It's not like that. During the rest of the year, it's not like that. Therefore, he meant if it dies, it always dies to the seller. So, am I why? He did mishicha. Someone of the says, no, you're right. Really, by meant you didn't do mishicha. What are we dealing with? He made him have a zechut to another person. And these four times, it's a zechut for him. So we give him a zechut not in front of him. The rest of the year that it's a chov, that's only going to be if it's going to be in front of him. And says, another answer. No, they went on the Torah. It is money does acquire. It's only from Chachamim Right, that the Chachamim came and they said that no, it doesn't acquire, you need to do Mashiach. But really, by met Mitzad Torah, money does acquire. So, the Amr of Yochanan says of Yochanan, Var Torah, Maut Konot, Mina Torah, money does acquire. So, why do we say that money is not enough? They have to do Mashiach. So, he says, Gezerah, Shema Yomalo, Nisefu, Chitecha, Balia. It's a Gezerah, maybe the Mocher is going to tell to the Lokeach that your, your, the, the, what you paid for was burnt in the Aliyah in my house, and therefore I don't have anything left. Which means, if you're going to tell me that the Ma'ot Konot, the money buys without Meshicha, so then what's going to happen is, the Metaltalin are going to be acquired, right, just with giving over money, even though they're still in the house of the seller. And then what's going to happen is, the seller is not going to come to try to save them anymore. Right, because imagine right now, they come and they tell the seller, ah, that your house is on fire over there. He's going to think, one second, what's already in the roof? My friend's uh, property that he just bought for me. It's a big deal, okay. If you're going to tell him, no, 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 no. St- he still has to do Meshicha, ah, he has to run and get it. And he's going to take it out. You understand? That's the concept. That's why they say that even though Mitzad the Torah, money does acquire, the Chachamim is still obligated Meshicha in order to make sure that he actually gets his property. Okay? Next, two dots. So he said that we're going to Modeh and everybody else at Zachulu Ma'otav that it does help. Man shakuldam, who's everybody else? So Amar Rav, Rav says, Balabait. Right, we're talking about the Balabait. It's not the Nachtom and not the Chenvani. The Chen of Mashmuel Shmuel also says, Balabait, the Amashmuel Loshanu, El Nachtom, but the Balabait, Kone, he is acquiring them. He's only to a Nachtom or to the Chenvani, which is basically the wine seller, the one that's selling the breads, right? The baker, for them, it's not going to be acquired if you're going to give them money, but for everybody else, it does. The Amashmuel Shmuel says, Loshanu, Ela, Ma'ad, that's only money. But if you're going to give them a utensil, kone, you are kone veru. Okay, because it says here you could be acquiring it through kinyan sudar. Kinyan sudar is like a, an exchange. So I'm going to give you one thing and you get the other thing. So I give you a utensil and by doing that, I acquired money. There's no exchange. I'm giving you money, I'm paying you, and now you have to bring me my product. A keli, a utensil, it's an exchange. I'm giving you a pot and you're giving me, uh, I don't know, a watch. In his hand or whatever it is, something you know, that's what we're talking about. Fine. The Amar Shmuel and Shmuel says also, Loshanu Ela Damalo, that's only if he told them Zecheli. But if he told them, make me an Eruv, Shaliach Shavir. He made him into a Shaliach and then he does acquire it. Because he made him into a Shaliach. Meaning, if he's doing it, Zecheli, meaning he's purchasing it for him, that's one thing. Doesn't help. But if he's coming and he's saying that it's make me an Eruv, it does help us, then you're being my Shaliach. Amar of Yudah says, you have met when you hear these words. Right, I'm Rabbi Yehoshmuel. Halacha is like Rabbi Yehuda, that we're going to make a rovech atzerot even without him his knowledge. Below, then not only that, like kol makom shnar Rabbi Yehuda be ruvin halacha kavto. Any time that we bring Rabbi Yehuda, we always paskin like Rabbi Yehuda as well. Okay, so says the Gemara. Amale Rav Chana Bagta, Rabbi Yehuda says the Chana Bagta to Rabbi Yehuda. I'm Shmuel, and I'm Shmuel. Afilu b'mavui nitru karotav lo chayav. We're talking about even in the halacha like Rabbi Yehuda in a mavui that was taken off the side beam or the top kora, the, the top beam, right? Side post or the top beam. 
Amale, right? So he says, Beruvin amarti lecha, velo mechitzot, only to do with the Ruv, not mechitza, that's a mechitzot. Right, the, the concept of the Ruvin about the side post and the top, that's mechitzot, it's not a Ruvin. So Amale Ravacha bered the Rav Ravashi, he says Ravacha bered the Rav to Ravashi, he comes and he says, right, as follows. Halacha mikal de pligim, we say that Halacha is a guy. So it's mashma that somebody argues. So he says, Vamar Yishom Levi, he says Yishom Levi, Kol makom shamar of Yudah imatai. Anytime that Yudah comes and he says the word imatai, or bamed wari munim, Rabbi Mishatenu, and on the Faresh of the Chachamim, he's only explaining the words of the Chachamim. So nobody argues, he's giving an explanation to the words of Chachamim. Meaning many times in the Gemara, they use certain languages to show you that there's a machloket, or they're agreeing. Here, when he says imatai or bamed wari munim, he's, it's an explanation, it's not that he's arguing, so for who argues on Rabbi Yehuda? They have said Alachah like Rabbi Yehuda. So it says Gemara, "Velo pligi." They're not arguing. And at time we learned in the Mishnah, "Im notosvim ale mosif umzakev." It's a rich idea. We learned in the Mishnah that if there's more people that move into the into the mavoi, you have to add more food, but you have to be mezaket to them also the food. But then you have to let them know. So it says Gemara, "No hatam." We're talking about over there a chaser between the two mavoot. We're not talking about a normal case. The Amar of Shizbi Amar of Chasta says of Shizbi Amar of Chasta. So to merit, it means to say, halukin chavera alav chavera v'rab Yehuda that they argue on Rab Yehuda. Ela, but rather gavra gavra karamit. You're asking contradiction from one person to another person, meaning from the words of Yeshua ben Levi on Shmuel. More savar pligi. One of them holds that they argue, and more savar lo pligi. The other one holds that they don't argue. So it's actually going to be a machloket between them. Okay, and we're going to stop over here.